Were the principles of NET already laid out in 1943 by a medical doctor named David Harold Fink? Kind of. For the TLDR crowd, the basic principles of NET are nothing new, but the speed at which NET works is unparalleled. Nothing works faster than NET except, like, magic. So way, way back in the day, when I was first introduced to NET and was telling everyone I knew about it, a friend of mine turned me on to this book, Release from Nervous Tension by Dr. David Harold Fink. My friend was like, you should read this book. This guy figured out all that shit like 50 years ago. A quick look at the table of contents got my interest immediately. Any NET practitioner will recognize these themes. Chapter 1 is titled, Even Dogs Get Neurotic. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. It's about Pavlovian conditioning. Chapter 2 is titled, Meet the Interbrain. Dr. Fink was born in 1894, so the medical terminology has changed. What he's referring to when he says the interbrain is the thalamus and the hypothalamus. For the lay people out there, the thalamus helps to manage your body temperature, hunger, thirst, mood, sex drive, blood pressure, and sleep. And the thalamus is your body's information relay station. All information from your body's senses, except smell, must be processed through your thalamus before being sent to your brain's cerebral cortex for interpretation. Your thalamus also plays a role in sleep, wakefulness, consciousness, learning, and memory. So anyway, Chapter 3 is called, The Mind Tells the Body, and Chapter 4 is called, And the Body Talks Back. He's laying down the mind-body connection perfectly. The next few chapters are about relaxation and how to get the body to relax. Chapter 8 is called, Action Leads to Freedom. And that sounds an awful lot like Dr. Scott Walker's saying about how the universe rewards the action step. Chapter 9 is called Play is Good Medicine, and of course that ties in with the NET concept of making sure to get at least six weeks of vacation per year, plus finding the joy in day-to-day -day life. Chapter 10 is called Words are Triggers to Action, which goes right along with the importance of semantics in NET and how the words we and the patients use are so important. Chapter 11 is called Every Man His Own Analyst, which is about how the patient walks in the door with the answers already inside of them. Chapter 12 is called The First 10 Years Are the Hardest. This chapter is all about how the traumas that we encountered in the first 10 years of life are typically the ones that are causing the most problems as adults. This is exactly why in NET, when we check out the concept of the original event connected to a stress response, the biggest and most profound corrections are usually tied to events that happened before the age of 10. Chapter 13 is called Treat Yourself to a Fresh Start, and this one is mostly focused on having the courage to quit your job if you hate it, and to go find something that is more aligned with your true self and your true passions and talents. The parallel to NET is the phase of treatment where instead of focusing on what you don't want, we're focusing on what you do want. Chapter 14 is called, Are You Allergic to Some People? And yes, it's exactly what you think. It's about what, in NET world, we call emotional allergy. It's case studies where Dr. Fink describes patients who present with true allergy symptoms, but they're actually being triggered by people. And the final chapter is called Try On A New Attitude, and it's all about changing your actions, beliefs, and attitudes to change your life. Okay, so we've established that there was a guy almost a hundred years ago now who had pretty much lined up the key concepts of NET philosophy. So what was his methodology and his treatment approach? He didn't use semantic muscle testing because he didn't know about it. And how did he get patients to figure out those early traumatic events from before the age of 10? Well, when it comes to figuring out the original events, he did what a lot of people still do today. He had his patients write their own autobiography. 
not a memoir for the public to consume, but only for their own consumption and only focused on the events as viewed from an emotional point of view. As you can imagine, this was a long and tedious process. And once that autobiography was completed, what did they do with it? What was the body component of this mind-body approach? He wasn't using acupuncture meridian reflex points or pulse points like we do. Instead, he used a method of laying down with a specific pillow configuration and deep breathing while picturing the events. It's not easy to just lay down and relax on command, so Dr. Fink had a 10-week program for helping patients learn to relax one body area at a time. 10 weeks. And while 10 weeks is nothing compared to a lifetime of trauma and stress, this factor of time is where NET shines as light years ahead. By using the semantic muscle test, which is a quick and low-tech form of biofeedback, we're able to pinpoint the original source of the stress without anyone having to write out their autobiography. And then, using the Chinese medicine pulse points or the meridian access points and some deep breathing, we're able to achieve the necessary level of body relaxation without having to go through 10 weeks of step-by-step -step relaxation exercises. The fMRI study on breast cancer survivors conducted at Jefferson Medical College and published in the Journal of Cancer Survivorship demonstrates clear evidence of changes in the brain itself following an average of just three to five 45-minute sessions of NET. Right now, there are countless mind-body approaches to health out there. NET is not the only one, and it's not the only one that works. But it is one of the fastest ones out there, and one of the cleanest ones. And by clean, I mean that there's a clean, systematic protocol that can be replicated by anyone. It's not dependent on anyone's powers of intuition or magical energy or any of that. A newbie learning NET at their very first basic seminar can get incredible results with a patient just by following the steps while staring at the manual. Why? Because it's based on physiological, neurological principles that have been documented in the mind-body context since at least 1943. I guess what fascinates me about this book too is that this copy, printed in 1953, was the 23rd printing. I've even seen editions from the 1960s that suggest that this thing was once a bestseller. Dr. Fink, who was a World War I veteran, spent eight years working at the VA helping vets who were dealing with what we now call PTSD, and he spent the later part of his career working as a neuropsychiatrist in Beverly Hills. So how did this mind-body approach rise and then vanish? Why does it feel like we're just discovering it now for the first time? Is it just going to vanish again? I wished I could talk to Dr. Fink and ask him questions, but unfortunately he died in 1968. But you know what they say, that which is remembered lives. So I'm putting this out there into the world so that Dr. David Harold Fink can live on and continue to help people to integrate mind and body and truly heal on a holistic level.